Good morning and welcome to our Youth and Children's Service for Sunday the 26th of April. We're ready to go, the sun's shining, it's a lovely day. Uh, today we're going to be thinking about the story of the road to Emmaus and the disciples walking on that journey have a personal encounter with Jesus and it changes everything for them. Uh, and they go from being scared and confused to being ready for action and their hearts alive. So we're going to be thinking about who we share the journey with and how we can do that together. So we're going to start by lighting our candle. So Isaac, are you going to do that for us? We're going to do our Jesus light of a world prayer. So Isaac, if you'd like to light our candle for us, um, um, as we do that, we're just going to pray. So Jesus, light of the world, we pray that you come and be with us in our prayer time. The risen Lord, we just pray that you be with us uh, and come and have a personal encounter with us this morning as we worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good boy, Isaac. Well done. So for our second icebreaker this morning, we're going to be doing a little uh, getting to know you thing. So you can do this with your family, either as a group or in pairs. So we're going to ask each other some questions and you're going to have a stab at answering them. So first question is, what was a happy moment in your life? Or you can ask, what was the happiest moment in your life? So boys, mm. what was a happy moment in your life? What's a happy moment for you, Isaac? Something happy that's happened to you. My happy moment was, uh, I've got lots of happy moments. My happy moment was when you two were born. Mm. A happy moment has been going to things like Alton Towers. I've got a happy moment yeah. today. Yesterday, when Isaac read, for, read his first ever book. Oh, yeah. I was so happy and so yeah. proud. Okay, pizza picnic. That we did. We did that yesterday. Pizza picnic was a, a happy time. Daniel, any happy moments for you? No, that was a sad, a sad moment because I was shouting. <laughs> oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Daniel, Daniel. something happy that's happened to you. My oh, did I? Well, you can have the same idea. I don't know. Oh, have you been? Happy? Okay, our second. Uh, well, our second question is: What has been a tough time for you? So, Isaac, what's what's something that's been a bit sad for you? Yeah, the virus, that's been a tough time for me as well, having to stay in. Daniel, what's been a tough time for you? Um, what do you find difficult? What have you found difficult in the past? Or sad? Go, going into my bedroom and having time. Oh, what when when you when you go and have some quiet time or some time out? You mm. find that day tough. It is kind of tough actually, because we feel a lot of emotions, don't we, when we're in, mm. when we go into time out. What about what things help you to feel calm? That audio books. Mm. Audio books. That's a good one, isn't it? Audio books. That we are cuddling. Oh, when we nice cuddle. Cuddle. I love a lovely soak in a bath. That makes me feel calm. I love listening to calming music, London grammar. That's a great one for me. Um, what about, final one, um, what are you most looking forward to doing when lockdown ends? Oh, going. Going to... to... Anyway. <laughs> going anywhere? No. Isaac, where do you know? Going to the cinema. Oh, oh that's and then, going and then to. you. Okay. Mummy is most looking forward to. I don't know. Not being 
not being scared when I'm outside. Mm. Yeah, true. I think for me, it will be, I don't know, just being able to go places uh, without having to just be stuck inside all the like, time. Or justify the reason that you go yeah. into that place. Like, just to have that oh, freedom. I, freedom. I know another one. Yeah. Going to play. Going to play zone, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. And then, a, a last question, if you want one, a bonus one. How do you picture what heaven will be like? Mm. Uh, you guys can have a go at that. So, what do you heaven? Think heaven's like? Um, what do you imagine heaven is like? The place where God lives. Candy floss. Yeah, like, you think <laughs> candy floss. Candy, candy, floss. candy floss, that would be epic. Mm -hmm. Sand, so Lots sandy of, beaches. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice if there's a beach. Oh, I, I think, think like a spa. Like oh, really? that's like my idea of like <laughs> really ornate buildings and relaxing. I think it's like handy. For our first song this morning, we're gonna do Wake by Hillsong Young and Free. So if you ping that into YouTube or you can put it on Alexa or Spotify. Um this is a great one. This is a lyric video. Uh, so we're just going to sing that now. Obviously, for licensing reasons, we can't play that with you. But if you pull it up in your own homes, then you can join along with the song. Enjoy. Our passage today is taken from Luke 24, 13 to 33. So pause the video, find your Bibles uh, and get ready to join in with us. It's the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. So here goes. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acts as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over, so he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we walk, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up, up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them, assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread.
At the start of this passage, the two disciples are found heading away from Jerusalem towards the village of Emmaus, a seven mile walk away. For starters, it is important to be aware that if they are heading away from Jerusalem, they are also heading away from the last known place that Jesus was last seen. Is it because they've lost hope? Is it because they're scared of the Jewish authorities? The passage doesn't state, but it does say that they are talking with each other and discussing everything that has been going on. And when Jesus comes up, walks alongside them and asks them about it, the passage says that they stood still, their faces downcast. So clearly the events leading up to Easter have been troubling them. A conversation happens between the disciples and Jesus where the disciples share their understanding of the events that have happened, their sadness and disappointment at Jesus' death and their confusion at the news that the women have found the empty tomb. Interestingly, Jesus starts by listening, hearing their turmoil and confusion. Then Jesus takes them back through the scriptures sharing with them all the passages concerning himself and how all of scripture points to him. When they get to the village, Jesus is going to go on, but they beg him to stay. It is not until their meal together, when Jesus breaks the bread and blesses it in the sacred act we call communion, that their eyes are opened and they finally recognise him. How often is it that we find that we don't really truly know someone until we share a meal with them. And the disciples' response is interesting. They say, why not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and open the scriptures to us? Look at the turnaround in the story. We have two men that were described as downcast and were confused, maybe even scared for their lives. And now, having spent time with Jesus, their hearts are burning within them. They're no longer confused, but clear. And instead of heading away from Jerusalem, they get up at once to go and share the news with the disciples. So Jesus offers that to us too. If we're willing to invite him to spend time with us, he will change our hearts so that what was once unclear will be clear. Where we have fears or sadness or anxiety, we will see hope. And where we are tired or demotivated, we will have our hearts stirred to action. Why don't you, during the time of lockdown, use the opportunity to spend more time with Jesus? And maybe, like the disciples, he will give you a new perspective on this perhaps confusing and worrying period of time. God bless you all. Our second song this morning is called This Little Light of Mine. Um, it's got words and actions. Uh, so if you pull it up on YouTube or you can play it on Alexa or Spotify, uh, we're looking for this version here. So join along at home, have fun and sing it nice and loud. Okay, so for the craft activity today, you need some cardboard and some scissors and you need to cut the cardboard into the shape of a foot. And then once you've done that, put three holes in the shape of a triangle. Then get to two pieces of foil um, and then fold them in half um, and then fold them in half and half again, half again, until you're left with uh, the thinnest piece possible. And then with the foil, you're going to, to twist it to create a thin strap, um, which will then bend into an arch and place into the top hole, bend it over and place it into the one of the base holes to create a flip-flop strap. Do the same with the other side and then decorate your flip-flop in whichever way you want to remind you to walk with Jesus. So as part of our prayer time today, I want to you to do two things. Firstly, maybe just spend some time making a list of things that make you sad or anxious or scared. And then uh, maybe just sit with your candle. And if you haven't lit one already, you can maybe light one and just ask Jesus, the light of the world, to come and help you overcome those fears. And you can even pray together as a family, maybe just share some of those things with each other uh, and pray for those fears and anxieties uh, with each other. And secondly, 
Sharing a journey of faith with someone is really helpful uh, as we could discuss, share and get to the truth together. So maybe make a list of three people that you could call this week to either let them know that you care or to maybe talk about the Easter message with them. Uh, and then again, just spend a few moments praying for those people. And you can do that as a family, share your list uh, and just spend some time praying for those people. So we're going to do that now. Uh, and um, I invite you to do the same.